Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I hope that all of you are doing well, and I hope that all of you are doing super great. So before we start, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Deepak. I have 15 plus years of experience in the same field. I have designed, developed, implemented solutions for various cybersecurity uh, organizations. Along with that, uh, I have certain patents on my name. And in addition to that, there are certain deployments in the cybersecurity field for the big giants that I have done along with the designing of the product. So without wasting any time, let's just get started. As you know, the today's title is Ethical Hacking Tutorial. Now, these are topics, the agenda that we're going to cover today. We will talk about what, what is hacking, Python features, why ethical hacking, what is a threat, different type of threat that we have, the tools, phases, social engineering, and cryptography. Now, let's talk about what is a hacking. So, people generally get confused that, uh, you know, what is the difference between ethical hacking and ethical hacking? So, what exactly is hacking? Let's talk about it. So basically hacking is the way, as you can see, to find the vulnerabilities uh, in a system. Now, everyone will have different perception about hacking. Some people think it's legitimate. Some people think it's not legitimate. So here in the case of hacking, uh, it can be legitimate or it can be illegitimate. If it's a legitimate, legitimate, like for example, if I'm informing you to perform a hacking on my environment, if you're doing it with my consent, it's known as ethical hacking. And if I'm not informed you to uh, scan my environment to find the vulnerabilities out, that is known as an ethical hacking. So an entire end goal of ethical hacking is to find out the vulnerabilities in the environment. And once you're able to find out the vulnerabilities, you're going to close the door for those vulnerabilities. Like in the case of ethical hacking, you want to think the way hacker can think you're going to find out the vulnerabilities. And once you're able to find out the vulnerabilities, you're going to close the door for those vulnerabilities so that an ethical hacker cannot uh, hack your environment out. Unethical hacking where is a hacking which is done without your consent where uh, the ethical hacker is going to find out the vulnerabilities in your environment and he is going to take advantage of those vulnerabilities wherein he is going to compromise your entire environment out. Now, what is a Python? Python basically uh, is, uh, you know, is Python is an interpreted object oriented high level programming language with dynamic semantics. Python was created uh, basically in the year uh, 1989 and it's very easy to learn. So it's basically object oriented, it's basically high level language, it's basically procedure, procedure oriented, and it's very, very easy to learn. Now talking about what are the different features uh, that we basically have for Python. Python have various features, like uh, it's very simple. So Python language is very, very, very easy to learn, very easy to understand. It's extremely simple. Uh, it has very easy code uh, and semantics. At the same time, it's an open source. So here you don't have to pay. Being an open source, it's basically available to everyone. So there is no need to worry that you have to basically pay high license costs and all. Being an open source just gives a huge advantage that you can save a lot of money. Plus the code is going to be available. So if you want to do customization as per your requirement, you can do whenever you want. Next is portability. Python basically code can be written in one computer and it can be executed into another without any kind of hassle, which basically allows you to share the code between different different components very easier next is embeddable and extensible you can allow to integrate your python with different programming languages at the sake of ease next is interpreted so here uh, entire uh, cpu and memory management uh, tasks are going to be handled by python itself so that's where there is no separate interpreter which is being required uh, next is huge libraries we basically have huge set of libraries uh, like matplotlib skittic learn the various libraries that you have with the help of which the integration is going to be easier Last is object orientation. So it basically supports the OOPS concept, which is object oriented programming uh, structure, wherein your all the real life concepts like inheritance, encapsulation, data hiding, abstraction, basically uh, all of them are going to be supported in the case of Python. Now talking about the goals of ethical hacking. So what are the different goals that we have for ethical hacking? Let's talk about it one by one. So there are different goals of ethical hacking. The first goal is, is basically protect the privacy of the organization uh, from being hacked. It basically transfer, uh, you know, it basically provides you all the reports, whether it's a bug, it's a vulnerability, it basically provides you all the reports. At the same time, it uh, it's easily uh, helps you to identify the weakness that you are going to have in your hardware and the software. Now the question is, why ethical hacking? I hope that now, uh, you know, you can make a guess because the ethical hacking is basically required because your digital information that you're going to have is valuable. And if your information is going to be hacked, your customer's data, client data is going to be hacked, it can compromise the entire uh, company's environment. Even it can basically bring down the company's name and fame. It can basically bring down the company's share. So uh, that's why ethical hacking is basically one of the important component. 
Now, talking about social learning at Edward Wake Up. So, if you want to take the course from us, the uh, you know this is going to be a journey which is going to look like. So, in the first class, we are going to learn about uh, what is cybersecurity, ethical hacking, different components of it. In the second class, we will learn about cryptography, what is symmetric algorithm, asymmetric algorithm, their design implementation with the practical hands-on. In the third class, we will learn about what are computer networks, security, uh, different type of computer networks, uh, OSI layer, TCP/IP, all those kind of things in detail with hands-on. In the fourth class, you will learn about application web security, how you can basically protect your application and web, the different ways of protecting it. In the next class, you are going to have identity access management, uh, wherein you are going to learn about uh, how basically you can provide different level of access, how you can protect and safeguard yourself from it. In the sixth class, we are going to learn about vulnerability analysis and system hacking, different components and subcomponents. In the seventh class, you will learn about sniffing and SQL injection attacks. Uh, what are the different ways through which you can find out database vulnerability and how you can exploit it? In the eighth class, last class, you will learn about denial of service and session hijacking. And at the end, you're going to become a superhero who is going to have a cape like this. Just kidding, you're going to become a superhero with the knowledge. Now, talking about what exactly is a security threat. So you can say security threat is basically a risk that can potentially harm your, your system or a computer. So in other words, some, something which has the uh, capability to harm your computer is known as security threat. Now it can be of two times physical threat and non-physical threat. Now let's talk about uh, one by one. Physical threat basically is a threat with like which, which is physical nature, like an internal, external humans are the physical threat. Non-physical threats are like your worms, virus, trojans, ransomware, uh, all these are known as non-physical threats. Talking about the preventive measures, generally guys, uh, the threats that we are talking about, even threats, different topics, are uh, something that we talk about in detail. Uh, I would say in extreme detail. Right now, um, based on the stringent timeline that we have, that because this webinar uh, is not, not the course, that's why we are trying to talk the glimpse of it. Otherwise, we go in extreme detail during the course because we have a sufficient bandwidth. Now, talking about the preventive measures, there are various ways through which you can try to prevent. So basically, your organization should have the logical security measures in place. At the same time, your organization should basically have some cognitive cybersecurity measures like IDS, IPS tools, with the help of which they can safeguard themselves. Your authentication methods that you are using uh, to access your servers should be strong. Like you should use strong passwords, strong um, you know credentials should be there. Multi-factor authentication should be there. Biometric reader, fingerprint reader, retina scanner. These kind of authentication methods you should use so that if one factor is compromised, which is your password, with the help of other uh, factor, you can still maintain the security. At the same time, you should have to basically make sure that uh, you uh, basically have a sufficient intrusion prevention system, intrusion detection system as part of your cybersecurity era. Now, talking about ethical hacking skills, like what are skills you require being an ethical hacker? So being an ethical hacker, you should have good knowledge in programming like HTML, C Sharp, Python, SQL, Java, PHP, and you should have in-depth knowledge about operating system like Windows, Linux, and at the same time, you should have good knowledge in networking. Now, why you should learn this program? Uh, there are various reasons because hackers are the biggest problem solver. This is basically a field which is going to be evergreen. At the same time, while writing a program, you can also try to find the weaknesses and you can door, uh, close the door for those weaknesses. And you can customize your already existing application to your requirement. Now, talking about the different tools that we have for ethical hacking that we cover in the course, like your burp suite, your nmap, your equinetics, your hashcat, your netspark, your SQL map, all these different tools that we covered. Now, moving on, talking about what is social engineering. Social engineering basically is one of the way or art to manipulate users uh, so that they can reveal your sensitive information, which is confident, confidential information like their username and password, so that uh, you, know, you can access their system out. That is a social engineering. Now, the kind of emotions which are exploited are greed, kindness, where you try to talk to someone, try to gain the confidence, and you basically uh, take that person into confidence and you uh, you know, convince them to share your sensitive information out. That is the social engineering. Now, it has different faces. Talking about what are different faces that we have ethical hacking. So, one of the biggest, uh, you know, uh, the phase of ethical hacking is gathering information. Where you are going to get the information, we are going to start with you know, finding out the information uh, about your target, information from the public sites, information from internal information, like from NS lookup, information from your who is record, their register information. So you try to get out the entire uh, information gathering. Once that information is gathered, then you're going to plan the attack. Like 
um, basically how you're going to plan the attack if you're able to see okay this organization has three four open ports how you're going to utilize it how you're going to pass it and somewhere malware then you are going to uh, decide which tools you want to use like for example i want to use bob suite and map john the ripper which tool i'm going to use for hacking after that uh, you are going to make an actual attack where you're going to exploit the system out once that is done then you are going to uh, have the sensitive information revealed to you with the help of which you can utilize that information for various tags later on and that's the way the entire cycle work in the case of social engineering now there are different techniques of social engineering uh, first is basically you know your familiarity exploit where you know about some of the tasks uh, like you know about some of the information about the user about the organization using the information out you will try to reveal uh, and get uh, you know hold of the other information that you have second basically is intimating uh, you know circumstances where you try to threat the user you try to gain the confidence you try to create a panicky situation where the user will trust you like for example uh, we got an email from your ceo that his account is that please share his information otherwise we are going to lose the entire money so you try to create a panicking situation wherein user is going to uh, you know worry and user is going to share the sensitive information to you directly next one basically is the phishing wherein uh, you are going to uh, uh, you know get hold of your like uh, social media accounts uh, information you're going to use it to make an attack and the last one is interrogating uh, human emotions where you are trying to you know build the confidence you are trying to uh, create a kind of a scenario where the user is going to trust and he's going to share the information out that's the way basically the attack is being performed going on talking about what is cryptography cryptography basically is an art of converting your readable form of data into unreadable form where you are going to convert your plain text data into the cipher text that is known as readable form for example i want to share my bank account information to my friend so instead of sharing that bank uh, account information to him i'm going to you know share that information into the encrypted format wherein so that apart from sender and receiver no one else can understand so that basically is the uh, you know cryptography is, is an art of converting uh, your one form of message to into another form so that only the relevant people can understand that message out uh, wherein for the cryptography uh, we require a technique which is known as encryption and for encryption technique basically we require the key so we are going to convert the one form of message into another form with the help of a key and we are going to convert uh, you know uh, the encrypted form of message into the plain text form with the help of the key so we have two kind of key symmetric and asymmetric like in this case you can see this is my plain text message i love apples i have converted into this cipher text form so that no one can understand apart from the receiver so basically the person who is going to hold the key who will be able to unlock this data out and will be able to retrieve this plain text so uh, there are there are different techniques like symmetric cryptography asymmetric cryptography all those kind of techniques we cover that in course in detail and uh, here we are just talking about a glimpse of it but i hope that uh, it's clear to you that what is cryptography now we have a different term which is script analysis so basically script analysis is an art wherein we are trying to find out the original plain text from the cipher text now the one that we have seen here now if i will be having this cipher text with me i don't know what the key is without knowing a key i will try a different permutation combination and i will try to retrieve the original plain text back so without knowing the key i am just trying to find out the original plain text back that technique is known as your Crypt analysis. So here in this case, like why we do it was what is the sense of having crypt analysis? Because we want to measure the security that how much secure our algorithm, the technique is that we have used. Like for example, there is a car company. That car company is basically going to um, you know launch the car. Before they are going to launch the car, what they want to do is they want to see that the like the car is uh, efficient enough. The car basically can handle the load. It can basically give the you know. Uh, good mileage so for all such kind of scenarios we are going to uh, you know perform some testing just to see the strength like how much strength, uh, you know secure or how much our uh, technique is so likewise we use script analysis technique just to know that how much secure our algorithm is and uh, if it's going to be quite impossible for anyone to break the security out so moving on talking about the cryptographic techniques so we basically have various uh, techniques um, basically one is like brute force where what we do is we try each and every permutation combination uh, that we try to find out the original sequence that we have second is a dictionary uh, where we are going to have the entire list of like uh, data where we are going to have you know the corresponding plain text and cipher text and we will see that if it is correlating if it is correlating we will find it try to find it information out 
Now talking about algorithms, we have various algorithms of cryptography like MD5, SHA, RC4. MD5 basically stands for message digest 5, uh, which is basically used for hashing, where we are going to create 128 bit hash value. SHA basically is one of the secure algorithms that we use right now, like SHA2, SHA3, one of the most popular uh, hashing algorithms that we use for hashing. Next is RC4 that we we don't use that much because they, it has some certain vulnerabilities out. Okay, guys, we can wrap up the webinar for today. So it was an immense pleasure to meet all of you guys. I hope you have learned a lot and enjoyed a lot of the, the things today. And uh, wishing all of you a great evening ahead and enjoy the rest of your day, guys. We will meet in future.